Amen. Amen. And today, we want to welcome each one of us into the house of the Lord. Amen. And we will remind ourselves about being in the house of the Lord. Amen. Our topic today is house of the Lord. House of the Lord. House of the Lord from Psalms 122. Psalms 122 and verse 1. Psalms 122 and verse 1. Psalms 122 and verse 1. Now we are in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are in the house of the Lord. Amen. With our children. Amen. With the over 65. Amen. With under 6. Amen. With under 10. Amen. With under 13. Amen. We are all in the house of the Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, for six months you have not been shouting hallelujah. For six, seven months. So we have to bring ourselves back to where we were before the closure of the places of worship. But now we are back. Hallelujah. Amen. We are back. Psalms 122 and verse 1. I was glad, and the word was, I was, is in capital letters. Even, I don't know whether you're, whichever translation that you have, in my translation, it is in capital letters. I and was is in capital letters. The psalmist, David, is so happy to be in the house of the Lord, to be told to go to the house of the Lord. And we are back in the house of the Lord. The Bible says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We need to rejoice that we are in the house of the Lord. And now we have realized that it is possible that we, what we have been taking for granted, it can disappear. This fellowship that we were having before March, a time came we could not fellowship the way we are fellowshipping together. We should not take it for granted to be found in the house of the Lord. And when we have strength, when we have the ability, when we have the opportunity, we should be found in the house of the Lord. Before that, maybe people came to the house of the Lord when they wanted to. But a time came when you wanted to, but you could not come. I remember a time we were here and a contingent of our GSU came and we were told we have to leave. It is good you are not here. I don't know whether you have come back. <laughs> yes, they, it came here. When we were, we were live streaming and we were told there are orders from above that you have to disperse, disperse peaceably. But we had already finished uh, the, the recording. And every Sunday, we were being visited. But we thank God. Today, if they come, they will come to fellowship. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And God is so good, we were able to keep all the rules. We were able to get even a letter from the region, commander, for us to be able to gather and live stream. It is not obvious that we can be found in the house of the Lord. We should count it a privilege when we are found in the house of the Lord. Count it a privilege. And when you have the opportunity, don't forsake. Don't forsake gathering together with others. That's what the Bible commands us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. That we should not forsake like it is the custom of other people. To forsake the fellowship of brethren. We should not forsake the fellowship. There are people who are not able to be here today. There are people who are not able to go to church today. And you have the ability, you have the power, you have the grace, you have the fear, you have the mask, you have the sanitizer, you have everything, and you find people not coming to the house of the Lord. We want to arrest that demon. Yes, the demon of uh, comfort that keeps people in the house even when they're supposed to be in the church. We bind the spirit of fear and timidity. It is defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. 
when the Lord has given us opportunity for us to gather together in the house, we should not be of such that forsake the gathering of the brethren. Because others, as a result of fear, they are not in the church. And fear is of the devil. Fear does not come from God. We have not been given the spirit of fear, but we have been given the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of soundness of mind. We cannot allow the devil to intimidate us. Amen. We cannot allow the devil to intimidate us. Fear does not come from God. And the fearful will be cast out. We are not of such to be afraid when the Lord is able to take care of us. We will follow all the rules, but we will not be afraid of gathering together in the house of the Lord. And it is very important, we should be glad to be found in the house of the Lord. We should be happy, we should rejoice because in the house of the Lord there is fullness of joy. But I'm going ahead of myself by quoting that verse. But when we are in the house of the Lord, why is it called the house of the Lord? Because the Lord is present. Your house is called by your name. Kule kwa nani? Kule kwa nani? Kwa mama nani? Kwa baba nani? Kwa fulani? That's how your house is identified with you. But this house is not identified with you, it's identified with the Lord. Why? Because God dwells in the midst of the praises of his people. God dwells in the midst of the praises of his people. So we should be glad to be found in the house of the Lord. We should rejoice. We should be found happy. We should be found singing and rejoicing that you can see your brother, you can see your sister. Maybe you are just seeing each other in the zoo. And how many phones are able to zoom? How many? But here we are. You can see your brother, you can see your sister. Even if you can't greet, at least you are seeing someone. Amen. Amen. So we need to be glad to be found in the house of the Lord. Because the presence of the Lord is here. If this place is identified with the Lord, His presence is here. He said that wherever two or three gather in His name, He will be in their midst. He is with us today. He is in our midst today. So we should be glad, we should be happy, we should rejoice that we are in the house of our Father. It is not just in the house of the Lord, but in the house of our Father. God is your Father. God is your Father. And when we talk about the fatherhood, we are talking about responsibility. God is responsible over you. He's responsible about what you will eat, about what you will drink, about what you will wear, about where you will sleep. God is responsible. He's not like our earthly, some of our earthly dads who are irresponsible. They work for 30 days, they collect the money, they go and drink the whole money with their friends in one night. And then there is no food, there is no rent, there is no... But God is responsible as a father. He takes care of his children. He provides for his children. He takes care of his own. And God is taking care of every need that you have because you are in his presence. And you belong to him. He is your father, you are his child. It is a great thing for us to be found in the house of the Lord. It is a great thing. It's a great thing to serve the Lord, but where do we serve him? Majorly in his house. That's where we serve him. That's where we minister to him. And how do we serve him? How do we minister to him? With worship, with praise. Even if there is a mask on your face, you can still afford to produce a sound. Hallelujah. Amen. You can afford to shout amen. You can afford to pray. You can afford to sing. Even if your mouth and nose are covered, you can still afford to sing. Amen. 
And that is a service unto the Lord. You can afford to worship Him, to praise Him, to magnify Him, to honor Him. That is a service unto the Lord. And it's a great thing to be found in His presence so that you can serve Him, so that you can worship Him. Many are staying in the house because of lack of knowledge of what they do in the house of the Lord. If they realize that being in the house of the Lord is a ministry unto God, they will rise up early and be found in the house of the Lord. Amen. It ministers. It testifies of who God is when you are found in His presence. It's a testimony that there is a living and a true God. And He's the one that you are coming to meet with. He's the one that you are coming to serve. He's the one that you are coming to worship. He's the one that you are coming to praise. He's the one that you are coming to adore. It is a testimony for you to be found in the house of the Lord. It's a testimony to the world. It's a testimony to the enemy that he is already defeated. You don't belong to him. You belong to God. That's why you are found in his presence. The drunkards, there is a place where they are found. Huh? The workers, there is a place where they are found. In the industry or in the factory. The worshippers, there is a place where they should be found. Where? In the house of the Lord. That's where worshippers are supposed to be found. In the house of the Lord. We are supposed to be found worshipping God. We are not supposed to be in our houses when we are supposed to be in the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. Or let me start with our, in our houses. In our houses there are limitations. In your house, you live according to your ability. In your house, you live according to your ability. If you can afford, you have the ability to buy food, there will be food. If you have the ability to pay electricity, there will be electricity. If you have the ability to pay the rent, there will be what? You will be in that house. If the, you have the ability to do something, you will do it in your house. And that ability is according to what you are able to do. That's the ability. But in the house of the Lord, there is no limit. God is not limited. He can do above and beyond what we are thinking, what we are asking, what we are imagining. God is able. He is not limited in any way. In your house, you may be limited. The, of other things, but in the house of God, God is not limited. It is good to be found in the house of the Lord. Somebody say, as somebody say in Psalms 84, verse 10. Psalms 84, verse 10. Psalms 84 and verse 10. The psalmist say, For a day in your courts, a day in your courts, it's better than a thousand elsewhere or uh, anywhere else. I would rather be a doorkeeper and stand at the threshold in the house of my God than dwell at ease in the tents of the wicked. This is what the psalmist said. That one day in the courts, he's not even saying inside the house. He was not talking about inside the temple. He was talking about the courts of the temple outside. In the compound where the temple was. But today we are not just in the compound. We are inside. Hallelujah. We are inside. And being, in the, being inside, the psalmist says that he would rather be a doorkeeper. Now moving closer to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, uh, to the temple. He was, he was talking about the court. Being in the court at day is uh, it's more beautiful and more excellent than being anywhere else for a thousand days. How many years are those? A thousand days. There are many years. He said, I would rather be in the court one day, more than a thousand days elsewhere. And then he moves closer and says, it is better that I be a doorkeeper. I open and close the door. And then he says, it is better that I be in the threshold 
where the limit is set, where people can access. That is better I be there, but be in the house of my God than dwell anywhere else. Why? Because there are benefits of being in the house of the Lord. When you are in the house of the Lord, you are in His presence. And in His presence, there is fullness of joy. That is Psalms 16 and verse 11. Psalms 16 and verse 11. In the presence of the Lord, in His house, there is fullness of joy. And in the name of Jesus Christ, anything that has tried to take joy from your life outside there, we render it powerless in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever has stolen your joy, we demand that joy back in the name of Jesus. Whatever has tried to squeeze joy out of you, now you are in the presence of the Lord, where the fullness of joy is found, where the complete of completeness of joy is your portion. Amen. If you came without joy, receive joy in the name of Jesus. If you came without happiness, receive that happiness in the name of Jesus Christ. But joy is more deeper and more stronger than happiness. Because happiness depends on what is happening around you. But joy is the fruit of the Spirit. It is not interfered with by whatever is happening around you. If you came, having your joy stolen, receive it back in the name of Jesus. Because the devil is not supposed to interfere with your joy. This is a gift, this is a fruit of the Spirit in your life. Receive joy, receive laughter Amen. in the name of Jesus. Be able to laugh, be able to rejoice, be able to bubble up with joy in the inside of you because you are in the house of your Father and you are in the presence of your God and nothing can take away joy from you. We need to rejoice because we are in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness. Fullness of joy. Money may have given you some joy. Being in good health may have given you some joy. Having your family around you may have given you some joy. But that was not complete joy. It is in the presence of the Lord that you have joy in its completeness. Amen. This is where we are supposed to rejoice. We're supposed to rejoice in the presence of the Lord. Just like when the cups are sacked and they are full, all the small goats, the kids, when they have sacked and now they are full, what do they do? They just jump around in the presence of their parent. We need to rejoice in the presence of our God. Church is not a place where you need to be gloomy. It's a place where you come and your joy is restored Amen. in its fullness, in its full measure. Amen. May you receive your joy. Amen. May you receive joy in full measure. May you receive joy in full measure. Amen. Maybe some people have done things outside there. Oh, today we are taking an interlude. An interlude from the message that we started last Sunday. It's an interlude for today to welcome us back in the house of the Lord. For us to know why are we in the house of the Lord? It's the place where we get the fullness of joy. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. One time Jesus was somewhere, was in a house. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees were there. And all what they were looking for is a mistake so that they can accuse Jesus. But in the same place, the presence of God was present to heal. But none of them received the healing. Why? Because they were coming to look for mistakes. I pray that today you are not come to look for mistakes. <laughs> I pray that today you are not looking at what is not working well. What is not happening. What is? I pray that today you are here because you have come into the house of your Father. Amen. Because when you, you come into the presence of Jesus, there is power to heal yes. and there was nobody to be healed among the Pharisees and the Sadducees there was nobody to be healed and when people discovered that there was nobody to be healed some four men who had faith 
they carried a paralyzed man and they came and there was no room at the door. The place was full. They were not able to carry the man in. The place was full. And Jesus was there. But he was having people who were just looking for mistakes. When they did not get a room, what did they do? You know the story. They climbed the roof. Without the permission of the owner of the house, they removed the tiles and they dropped the man. Before the man hit the ground, Jesus said, Son, your sins have been forgiven. And all of them began to murmur and to complain. Who is this? Why is he saying that your sins have been forgiven? And Jesus knowing what was going on in their heart. Because in the presence of the Lord there is healing. Jesus said so that you may know. That the son of man, the son of God has power to heal. And to forgive sins. He told the paralyzed man. Rise up. Take your mat and go. And the man was paralyzed. Rose up. Rolled the mat put it on the shoulder, and he left. The place where there was no room for him to come in, there was room for him to go out. Amen. There is breakthrough in the house of the Lord. Amen. There is breakthrough in the presence of God. Amen. Maybe you have come in the presence of God, nothing is working for you, because you have landed here. The presence of God is giving you a breakthrough in your life. In the name of Jesus, things will begin working for you. Those of us whose businesses were shut, businesses will open. The doors of your businesses will open. Customers will begin to come. Because you cannot come into the presence of God and live the same way that you came. God always has something for you. There is something for everyone in the house of God. Hallelujah. There is something for you in the house of the Lord. What have you come for? What should God do for you? For this man, it was healing. He needed healing from paralysis. And today, I don't know what you are come for. There is something for you in the presence of God. There is joy. There is healing. And not only healing of your body, but also healing of your business, healing of your marriage, healing of your children, healing of your spouses, healing of your family relations. In the name of Jesus, there is healing. May you receive healing for your family. May you receive healing for your business. May you receive healing for your, for your factory, for your company. May you receive healing for your office. May you receive healing for your schools. You may be here. You are working in a private school. And they are saying they are not opening. It is going to open. Monday will be bound and that school will open in the name of Jesus. You cannot come in the presence of God to lose a job. You come into the presence of the Lord for a blessing, not for a curse. We are here to be blessed. In the presence of God, there are blessings. The man was blessed with healing and was blessed with good health. And not only good health, everything that was paralyzed in his body was restored. May the Lord restore everything that the devil has tried to paralyze using coronavirus or using this situation and using the circumstances. We are arising from the circumstances. We are arising from the darkness that the devil has brought into the world. We are arising from any obscurity. We refuse to be covered. We are arising. We are rising and we are shining for the glory of God has come. Oh, you know that message. We are rising. We are shining. For the glory of God has risen upon us. And His glory, the Kabod glory, the indwelling glory, are the, 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 are the, the glory that comes upon you, that is visible, and the, and, the, and the glory that dwells in you, the Shekinah glory, both of them are shining at the same time. So you cannot be covered. You are in the house of God and you are in the presence of God for you are healing. May everything about you be healed. Amen. And you know healing is wholesomeness. Yes. Whatever is not working well in your life, in your marriage, in your family, in your business, in your career, now in the name of Jesus, 
because of the presence of God, his anointing, may he destroy every yoke of the devil. Amen. And may you be set free as a child of God. Amen. So in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of God, there is healing. In the presence of God, there is forgiveness of sin. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The man was forgiven his sins. So we need to receive. We need to receive assurance that we have been forgiven. You know, some of us, because of being away from the church for too long, you forgot to pray. You have been eating without giving thanks. Because the only thing that you remember is to wash your hands, to sanitize, to wear a mask. You don't remember to give thanks. And you have been, now, you have been forgiven. <laughs> we, are, we are coming back to our position as God's children. Because in the house of the Lord, you have a position. You have a position as God's child. There is who you are in the house of your father. And take back your position. The enemy may have tried to squeeze you because you are alone. Now we are many. We are in the house of God. We are children of God. When you are you are trying to, to when you are trying to ignite the fire alone, now the fire is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know one. When you take one coal and you put it out of the fire, it grows coal. But when you put it together with the rest, it burns brightly. Amen. Maybe you are feeling cold. Because there was nobody to lead worship. There was nobody to lead you with a song. And you know how you normally sing. But don't despise yourself. You have a provision in the Bible. Make a joyful noise. However you are singing, it was accepted Amen. by God. And now we are in the presence of God. We can warm one another. We can ignite one another. We can be on fire for God once again. Amen. Receive back the assurance of forgiveness of sin. Amen. As a child of God. Receive it back. Amen. Know that God loves you. Know that God forgives you. Know that God cares for you. Know that God takes care of everything concerning you. So in the house of the Lord, there is not only joy or the fullness of joy. In the house of God, there is not only healing of every area of our lives. In the house of the Lord, there is every mountain melts like wax. Amen. <laughs> Why are you struggling with things when you are alone? May they melt in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Every mountain that you are facing. Everything that you are going through, may it melt like wax. Amen. Psalms 97 verse 5. Psalms 97 and verse 5. These are just a few things that are mentioned. There are around 49 things. There are around 49 things that happen to you when you are in the presence of God. But I'm just mentioning a few to welcome us back in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalms 97 verse 5. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. So the Lord that we are worshipping is not just the Lord of this house. Just the Lord of this location. It's the Lord of the whole earth. And every mountain, every mountain, mountains, or hills, not just one, but many, they melt like wax in his presence. Are there things that you are facing and they have looked like a huge mountain before you? Or they look like hills before you? My Bible talks about mountains. Amplified Version talks about hills. Are there things that you are trying to handle and it looks like a huge mountain to you? It is melting. Because we are in the presence of God. Amen. Once you come with it, at the presence of God, that thing, when it sees, when it approaches, when it finds itself in the presence of God, it melts like wax. Many of us, we think about wax. You know the candle? You know the candle? When you light it, what happens? The wax melts because of the fire. Now God is a consuming fire. Amen. 
May he consume every mountain that the devil and every hill that the devil has raised against you. Amen. Every hill, every mountain. May it be flattened. May it melt in the presence of God, of the Lord of the whole earth. May every mountain melt. Amen. Maybe it's the mountain of school fees. You're wondering tomorrow. You're just thinking tomorrow. The Lord is your provider. Amen. It is not the week that is your provider. Amen. It's not time that is your provider. It's the Lord. Amen. It is the Lord who provides for you. Amen. And God knows that you are taking care of it. That child of his, he will provide. Amen. Let that mountain melt. Amen. Because it is hindering you to see the Lord. Amen. You are in the presence of God and all that you are seeing is that huge mountain of your husband. Huge mountain of your wife. Huge mountain of your children. Huge mountain of death. Huge mountain. Whichever mountain, let it melt so that you can see the Lord. Amen. You are here to see the Lord. You are, here not to, you are not here to see a mountain. You are here to see the Lord. May, you, may that mountain melt. May you see the Lord. Amen. May the Lord meet with that mountain. It cannot stand in His presence. Amen. May it give way. Amen. In short, may it Amen. give way. So speak to that mountain. Tell it, give way. Tell it, give way. Aye. What then? When I jump, measure that open is kizanga bila kusema kitu. That's a kani kwa bia. Tell it to give way. The father ran yangalia. We we are here live. Tell your neighbor we are here live. It is not live stream. We are here live. So respond. Tell every mountain in your life to give way. Some of the things you don't think they are mountains, but they are hindering you to see the Lord. They need to give way so that you can see the Lord. You are his child. Every mountain give way in the name of Jesus. Everything that is giving you sleepless nights, everything that is making you to scratch your head is a mountain. Amen. Let it give way. Amen. You are in the presence of God. Let that mountain melt like wax. Amen. I'm also speaking to some hills around. Amen. I'm telling them to give way. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There are some hills around us and some of you had to go around them so that you can access here. Those hills should give way also. Amen. 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 Soon in the name of Jesus. And the hill that is standing in our way for us to go to town should give way. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I really was trusting God that when we resume, we'll resume there. But in back in Kidoko, Nata Yoruta Marisa, Natuta Ikea, Akuna Murima Tatuzuya. Hallelujah. Amen. Where we have come from is, is, is the farthest. Yeah. Where we are going is so near. Yeah. We are just about. Tell your neighbor, just about. Just about. <laughs> but we, the mountains are melting like wax. What was standing in before you? That you are not able to see God. It should melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. We expose it to the Lord. We expose that mountain to the Lord. We expose that mountain to the power of God. We expose that mountain to the to the to the fire of God. Make it melt. And some mountains for them to melt is provision. May the Lord provide for you. So that that mountain clears by provision. Lastly, lastly, because I just picked a few. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. We are looking at the benefits of being, in the, being found in the presence of the Lord, which is in his house. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. The Bible says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
So where the Lord is, is in his house. Where the Lord is, his presence is there. And where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Emancipation, emancipation from bondage. Being set free from bondage and receiving freedom. Every bondage that has come upon your life, you are in a place where bondages can be broken. You are in a place where bondages can be removed. You are, you are in a place where bondages can be lifted from your life. You are in the presence of the Lord. The one who knows how to carry burdens. Let every bondage be destroyed and be broken from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Because it is the anointing, the divine ability of God that destroys the bondage, that destroys the job. And the Lord is present. And in His presence there is freedom, there is liberty. Receive your freedom, receive your liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Walk in the freedom that you need to walk in. Which area do you feel bound? Receive your freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whichever area that you feel there is a yoke that is hindering you, there is a blockage in your way, receive the freedom in the name of Jesus. Let that yoke be broken. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the yoke be broken. broken by the anointing. It is the anointing that not only breaks but destroys. Many of us, we pray for the yokes to be broken. But from today, as you pray for the yokes to be broken, pray that it be destroyed. Amen. So that it is there no more. Amen. You know, to break, the pieces can be fused together again. But once it is destroyed, it cannot be assembled again. May the Lord destroy every yoke of the devil in your life. Amen. May every burden be lifted. Amen. May you walk in freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Those demons that thought that you can no longer come in a place where you can get help and they were squeezing your neck at night, choking you. They were harassing you in your dream. May you receive your freedom now in the name of Jesus Christ. We refuse those nightmares in Jesus' name. We refuse those bondages in the name of Jesus Christ. We refuse those harassments in the name of Jesus Christ. May you walk under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of the living God. That when you get into your house, the presence of God will destroy every activity of the devil in your house. Amen. Let sorcery be destroyed in Jesus' name. Let witchcraft be destroyed in Jesus' name. Let every power of darkness be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. And may you walk in your freedom. We are in the house of the Lord. Amen. Our topic was in the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord, we have joy. In the house of the Lord, we find peace. In the house of the Lord, we find liberty. In the house of the Lord, we find healing. In the house of the Lord, yokes are broken and we are set free from every bondage. We are living the house of God like this. We are not living here heavy, uh, heavily laden and loaded with loads of care. We are living here free. Receive your freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Which area do you need freedom? You know it. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, now we cannot call you forward to pray for you. But right where you are, the Lord is there with you. Amen. His omnipresence is everywhere at the same time. He's, he's here. He's all over here. And he is the yoke broker. Amen. He can destroy every yoke of the devil and break every yoke and destroy it. Amen. So enjoy your freedom. Enjoy your freedom. Receive your peace. Receive your peace in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Receive your freedom in the name of Jesus. Let every mountain that the devil had raised before you, let them melt like wax now in the name of Jesus. Because we are in the presence of the Lord. Let joy well up in your heart and spring forth even with a song in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive what you came for because the Lord is here to provide for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you happy to be back in the house of the Lord? Yes. This was a, a welcome message. <laughs> it was a message to welcome you back in the house of the Lord. Now, Kwanzaa Jumapili Jaya Tuna Songa Bede. 
Haleluya. Tunarudi mahali ambapo tulikuwa last Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. We are dealing with what? With the dead past. We are burning. Please let me not start. Because if I start going that direction, it will not be the welcoming speech. <laughs> we will get back to other things that will, will start being on fire for God. But welcome back. Amen. That message was just to welcome you back into the house of the Lord. Amen. You can receive, you can walk in freedom in your house, in the house of your father. Even if there is a mask on your face, know that you are free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if your mouth is covered and your nose, know that you are free. You are free in the house of the Lord. Receive your joy, receive your peace, receive everything that you need because it is in the house of your father. You're saying maybe you did, you did not mention mine. Whatever it is, receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Receive yours. Amen. Because you know it and the Lord knows it, receive it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, it's so, so good to see every one of us. I want to pray, but now we will pray with you wherever you are. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll just pray with you wherever you are. But Faith is not limited. Amen. Faith does not know social distance. Faith does not know this measure that we have and we have to observe. Your faith is not limited. Let us join our faith. Let us join our faith. Are you believing God for something? Mention it before God as I pray. Mention it before God as I pray. Well, let me give you a minute to respond. Uh, let me give you a minute to respond. Just respond. Respond to God. Respond to God. Respond to His Word. Respond to God's Word in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your Word. We give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we are in your house, O oh God. We are so glad to be back into the house of the Lord where there is fullness of joy, where there is liberty, where there is healing, where there is freedom. Where Lord God Almighty mountains melt like wax, where you meet with our needs, O oh God. Where Lord God Almighty operate in our midst when we gather together, where you command life, where Lord God Almighty you bring unity and you command life in the midst of your children. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we are united in the faith, we are united as your children in the name of Jesus Christ, and we will not forsake the fellowship of the brethren. We will come to the house of the Lord. And and we will worship you. We will praise you. We will serve you. We will minister to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise, glory and honor. Because you are the Lord and because you are God. We yield and surrender to you Father. Be lifted up and exalted. Because you are the Lord and because you are God. Father we worship you and we praise you. You are highly lifted and exalted. King of kings and the Lord of lords. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ Father. That you may supply to every need. That you may meet with every need. I pray that in your presence, because it shall be found in the presence of the Lord. Abraham said that it shall be found. Lord God Almighty, Jehovah Jireh, in your presence it shall be found. Whatever we need, Lord God Almighty, it is found in your presence. I pray supply to every child of God. I pray supply to every child of God. For in your presence it shall be found. In your presence it shall be found. In the name of Jesus, we receive, oh God, we receive the blessings that you have for us. We receive the blessings that you have for us. We receive the blessings that you have for us, oh God, as we thank you for gathering us again in your presence. As we thank you, Lord God Almighty, for bringing us, oh God, even to fellowship with one another. Thank you for this unity. Thank you for this oneness, oh God. May you command a blessing. May you command a blessing. May it please you, oh God. May it be like, oh Master, the anointing of the first high priest, even Aaron, oh God. The way it please you, Jehovah God. I pray in the name of Jesus that the head will be anointed in the mighty name of Jesus. That the 
anointing will flow. The presence of God will, uh, will flow. The presence of God uh, will change uh, our minds. Uh, will, will, will all of the Almighty influence uh, our thinking patterns. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, I pray, oh God, that embarrassment uh, will be taken away, oh God. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, I pray that Master, the anointing uh, will flow, oh God, to the very scars, uh, to every area in our lives. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, as you trust you, oh God, may you meet each and every one of us but with, uh, with everything uh, that we, we need, oh God, meet the need of each and every one of us because we are in your presence in the name of Jesus Christ. We worship you, we praise you, and we give you glory. This we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen and amen. 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 Are you happy? Are you happy? Do you feel welcome into the house of God? 